this is Vince Miller. Thanks so much for joining me for this devotional. We are in Acts chapter 28. I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. It reads, After we were brought safely through, we then learned that the island was called Malta. The native people showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and welcomed us all, because it had begun to rain and was cold. When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the native people saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer. Though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. They were waiting for him to swell up or suddenly to fall down dead. But when they waited a long time and saw no misfortune come to him, they changed their minds and said, he was a god. <laughs> so remember, Paul is just shipwrecked. About 300 passengers are stranded on a small island called Malta, and they encounter a welcoming tribal people that take them in. And as they're trying to warm up because it's winter and they're wet, Paul grabs a bundle of sticks to throw in the fire. As he does, a snake launches at Paul from the fire, biting him on his hand. And of course, it's a viper. Now, the viper family of snakes are the most deadly in the entire world, killing most people in about 10 to 30 minutes. But then nothing happens to Paul. He just shakes off the snake. And this messes with the theology and the justice of the molten people. They believed that justice was being handed down to Paul for wrongdoing. But when nothing happens to Paul, they decide that he is a god because this is the only wrong conclusion that they can make from flawed theological assumptions. Now, this is a perfect illustration of the problem with bad theology. While an assumption may come from genuine reverence, right? If it is based on an untruth and makes the wrong con connections, it will end up trying to reconcile itself with further wrong assumptions and wrong conclusions. So, for example, just consider the progress of their bad theology. See, Paul's a prisoner, so he's guilty of something. He doesn't drown at sea, but he is bitten. Viper bites are equivalent to justice, but the bite doesn't affect Paul. Therefore, the only right conclusion is that Paul is a god, that he was morally good. He didn't do anything wrong. He's pronounced not guilty by the molten people. <laughs> now, we all know that Paul is not a god, <laughs> and he is not morally good. But the molten people have the same issue that all people have when it comes to understanding God. We want to make ourselves into gods. We want to believe that we can be good or moral enough so that nothing bad will ever happen to us. Because in our minds, morally good people do not deserve anything bad. But the truth is, is that bad things like shipwrecks or viper bites or tornadoes or COVID happen to anyone, right? These circumstances are signs, but they are more signs of us being fallen people living in a fallen world. They are not signs to elevate ourselves as gods, but signs to point us to the one God. They point us to the truth that we will all meet judgment one day, and that day will come quickly, like a viper bite in the night. <laughs> and on that day, we should be prepared to meet with the God of perfect justice. But do you want to know why Paul didn't die from the viper bite? There is a reason. There's really only one reason. Jesus made a promise to him. Jesus promised that Paul would make it to Rome. And Jesus makes good on all his promises. And it was this promise that saved him and nothing else. If you remember, that promise was made back in Acts 23, Verse 11, where Jesus appeared by his bedside and said this. He said, take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me in Jerusalem, you must also testify about me in Rome. So today, trust in God's promises, not in your moral goodness. Shake off the snake of moral goodness and trust in the promise that he made to you. And here's how that promise goes. It's found in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I love you guys. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.